What is up guys? Petrie Jones here. Today I'm going to show you how you can build a fairly affordable gaming PC in 2020. Uh, it's actually the computer behind me. I built this roughly four months ago. I've been testing it out since as my general desktop for both work as well as play in terms of gaming and it has performed really well. I'm able to play pretty much anything I want uh, with decent frame rates, assuming I adjust the settings accordingly. And for a lot of games, I'm able to get away with high and ultra settings actually. So it's a, a very good uh, bang for your buck. One thing I will mention before we jump into it is I did add an AIO uh, after I made uh, the initial build and that will not be included in this video uh, because it's just not budget oriented. I may do a future video um, as to why I installed that and if I would recommend putting an AIO that costs more than your CPU, um, spoiler alert, I probably would not recommend that but that's for a future vid. So without further ado, let's jump into this. I will go through all of the parts, the cost and what you can expect in terms of performance. First and foremost, I went with an AMD Ryzen 5 2600 for the CPU. It is 3.4 gigs out the box. You can overclock it easily to 3.9 gigahertz. I have it overclocked to four gigs, no issues with stability. And I have to say that I think for mid range, AMD really does beat out Intel. Some may argue with me, but I think for performance to value ratio, they seem to just do a little bit of a better job uh, for those more mid-range style computers. Um, this is 135 bucks right now. I think you could probably find it cheaper if you shop around, but you know you don't need to spend too much money on your processor. Most of the time, modern games are not going to be bottlenecked by your, your processing speed, assuming it's something like the Ryzen 5 2600, you have more than enough power for, I'd say, 90% of the games out there, aside from some maybe very, very large open world online games. And even then, you're probably not going to have too much of an issue. For the uh, motherboard, we need to go with an AM4 socket to fit the Ryzen 5. I went with the Gigabyte B450 Aorus M. Uh, it is what they consider a gaming motherboard. The B450 Aorus M is their, uh, I think it's their lowest tier. I'm not 100% sure. However, that being said, it's a pretty good motherboard for the cost. I spent 85 bucks on this. You might be able to find some other brands that are very comparable um, and probably give you the same performance, maybe even a reduced cost. I know that ASRock, for example, um, ASRock makes a motherboard that's pretty much just like this, a B450M motherboard. Uh, it might be a little bit cheaper, so shop around if you will. Uh, but this is pretty good, and it also comes with uh, RGB compatibility. It's called RGB Fusion 2.0, which is on Gigabyte uh, motherboards, as far as I know. And the heat sinks in this are pretty robust. You can get away with some overclocking, I think. One thing you need to know is there's no onboard Wi-Fi with this particular motherboard. If that's something you're interested in, you're gonna need to buy a Wi-Fi adapter. Alternatively, you could just plug directly into the router like I do. I think it's actually better, and I would certainly recommend um, plugging direct. I think that you're going to have more internet stability when you're playing games and less lag. Um, so for me, it's not an issue, but keep that in mind. Um, again, this is an example of something you don't want to spend too much on. You just want to make sure that it will, uh, it will be able to handle your RAM, the amount of RAM you have, the speeds, and obviously the correct socket for your CPU and so forth. And that does it. Arguably the most important component in a gaming PC would be the graphics card, the GPU. I went with a Radeon RX 570. This is by PowerColor Red Dragon. Um, it is four gigabytes of onboard RAM on this. Now, at the time when I bought this, it was like $145 or $150. You can still find it at that cost if you look on eBay and you look around a bit. However, on Amazon, it's up to $210. I'm not quite sure why. When um, Interestingly, the RX 580, which is actually a better card, obviously a uh, successor to this, by the same company, PowerColor, is $179.99. So it's $30 less for the better card. So if I were you, I would definitely go with the RX 580 if you're gonna spend that money. And alternatively, you could just shop around and you can get maybe a RX 570 from uh, another manufacturer um, you know, if you want this particular GPU. Now, this is a really great 
card. I think that the RX 570s in general are just a workhorse. They're still benchmarking pretty well years after they've been released. And um, I think for the cost, they give you great value. This particular card, the Red Dragon by Power Color, one caveat is it's very noisy. So if you're playing games for quite a while, it starts to heat up, the, the fans will start to crank, and I'm telling you, it sounds like a vacuum cleaner. So if noise is a concern for you, you might want to look around, read the reviews, and do some research to make sure the card you get is, is um, lower decibel. But outside of that, it performs really well. I've been able to play whatever I want. All right, guys, moving into the RAM, I went with uh, 16 gigabytes, 3200 megahertz DDR4 RAM. This is by Alloy. It's called Warhawk. I paid 80 bucks for this RAM. Um, one of the cool features about it is it's RGB capable. As you can see, it syncs perfectly with the RGB Fusion 2.0 on the uh, gigabyte board, which I definitely, you know, that's an added bonus for me. I, I vest a lot of my decision making sometimes. As long as the performance is there, um, I definitely appreciate any type of aesthetic, aesthetic uh, bonus that might be associated like RGB, so that's good. With RAM, you know, I wouldn't suggest less than 16 gigs if you find something that's comparable for a little bit cheaper. Um, same storage capacity, same speed, I would definitely go with that. And I probably wouldn't go with less than 3000 megahertz. Um, I think the Ryzen 5 seems to be happier with some faster rated um, RAM. I don't have a box for it, but uh, I do want to briefly discuss the uh, storage that I have in here. I'm using a Kingston 480GB solid state drive. It's $60 right now on uh, Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. I forget the exact model number. Um, but 480 gig solid state, a solid state drive for 60 bucks is pretty good. Um, I would highly recommend going with solid state, at least for your boot uh, drive, like to, to boot up your operating system, because it's one of the few things that you'll notice um, right off the bat gives a performance increase, a noticeable one. Um, it, it's just much more responsive. Uh, applications open up in a much more snappy uh, manner, and uh, I, I, I would recommend it. Power supply unit, uh, EVGA 600 watt, 80 plus certified, 60 bucks for this as well. You can find better PSUs if you look around, if you want something that's a little bit more robust, reliable in terms of stability, you can go with a bronze or a silver rated. It's gonna cost a little bit more. I definitely wouldn't recommend paying for more wattage though because I just don't think that it's necessary. Okay, now moving on into the case, we have the uh, Dark Flash DLM21. That is 57 bucks on Amazon. And um, in terms of aesthetics and how sturdy and quality the case is, I really don't think it can be beat. I'm really impressed with the case and it's likely something that I will make a video of in the future. Um, but Specifically, I really like the tempered glass side panel that you can just open and close, uh, which is super cool if you just need to dust. If you need to take out a, a component and swap a component in, you can easily just remove this tempered glass panel. Um, so that's really convenient. To uh, top off the build, we went with these Aigo 3 and 120 millimeter fans. They're RGB fans. Uh, Kosher Tech made a review video on these um, fans and I was pretty impressed with the video and then I was even more impressed when I got the fans because I took them out and I made sure to play with the actual fan itself to see how sturdy it is. In terms of build quality, there's usually with cheaper fans, cheaper case fans, you'll notice some shifting. There's a little bit, but no more than any other fan um, and fans that probably cost twice as much as these. So I was really impressed by that. I think that this looks really good. Uh, of course, the AIO is not included in all of this, but still. Um, in terms of performance, I think you guys will really appreciate how well this computer performs. Uh, I'd love to hear about your uh, ideas on this build in the comments below. If you have any suggestions for better parts, uh, let me know and let everybody else know. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe.